Since the early days of life on Earth, our little planet has been on the receiving end of a number of unfortunate cataclysms. Beginning about 439 million years ago, there have been five major extinction events, each of which eradicated a sizable portion of Earth's life forms, and many suspect we're currently living in the sixth major extinction. Whereas the previous extinction events were caused primarily by volcanic activity and asteroid impacts, our current era has seen a dramatic increase in individual species extinctions between 10 and 100 times faster than normal, caused predominantly by human activity affecting the global climate. Scientists report that plants and animals are dying off at an alarming rate, and if that trend continues, we could face our very own mass extinction event in the not too distant future. Assuming the wheels of extinction are already set in motion, how could we protect biodiversity and Earth life as we know it? Could we somehow create a backup of the entire Earth, like some kind of biological hard drive? To answer that question, let's take a look at the main problems facing life on Earth in the event of a mass extinction. In the case that the extinction is caused by climate change, we could expect many biomes to become uninhabitable over the course of several years or decades. While this is a big problem, we would still likely have time to gather critical genetic material and live specimens of most plant and animal species in affected areas for storage and eventual repopulation. The thinking here is that these affected biomes could eventually be returned to a habitable state, whether through scientific efforts or simple passage of time. If, however, the extinction were triggered by an asteroid impact or other single catastrophe, it's unlikely that any complex life would survive, and the entire Earth could potentially be rendered uninhabitable for many decades or centuries, making off-site storage a necessity. Archiving and maintaining genetic material from every living species on Earth would be a tremendous undertaking, and could very well prove to be impossible. But we can look to current preservation endeavors to get an idea of just how feasible a whole Earth backup would be. Take for example the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Located near the North Pole, this Arctic storage facility contains the largest collection of agricultural biodiversity yet assembled, designed to protect valuable crops and plant species in the event of global disaster. This doomsday vault currently contains over 930,000 samples. The goal of the Svalbard Seed Vault is not to be an emergency stockpile of seeds in case the farmers of the world run out, but rather to be a bank of genetic diversity, lending seeds to scientists and farmers trying to develop new disease-resistant varieties, or subspecies that can thrive in new, more difficult climates. To use our hard drive example, the Svalbard Seed Vault houses thousands of Microsoft Word templates, ready to be opened, edited, and saved as new files on our new computer. As promising as the Doomsday Vault is, even this Arctic stronghold is not completely safe from the effects of climate change. In early 2017, unusually high temperatures paired with heavy rainfall caused a slight intrusion of water near the vault's entrance. As global temperature increases, the viability of the frozen seeds could be compromised and ruin the entire project. That brings us to the main obstacle to overcome in creating a perfect backup, off-site storage. For most backups, you can simply copy your files to an external drive and take that drive to another location in case of a house fire or electrical failure. But what happens when the computer is the entire Earth? Where could we save our files that would be safe from disaster on a planet-wide scale? The obvious answer would be outer space, simply away from the computer to use our analogy. But logistically speaking, that would be quite a challenge. A giant biological vault on the moon or free-floating space station would likely prevent its immediate destruction from Earth-based catastrophe like an asteroid impact, but the frozen seeds and genetic material would probably be subjected to large doses of radiation, rendering them damaged or completely ruined. So far, we've seen that seeds can survive at least six months in space, but there have been relatively few studies. Another problem is keeping the specimens sufficiently frozen. If the freezing methods fail, the hard drive's precious cargo will be destroyed. On the other hand, remaining frozen for too long could damage or destroy the specimens. So far, we've only seen animal sperm, eggs, and embryos that have been frozen for about 20 years to be viable. Any longer than that, and we'd be in uncharted territory. Another potentially insurmountable problem is that a space station or moon vault backup would likely have to rely on genomic data instead of actual biological material from each animal species on Earth to save on space and resources. Having sperm, eggs, and embryos in addition to live surrogate mothers is one thing, but creating a living animal from just a sequenced genome would be an enormous challenge and would rely on future advances in the fields of medicine and biology. Assuming we had this backup in place, if an asteroid impact rendered the Earth uninhabitable for, say, 200 years, we'd still have to contend with the probable lack of human populations available to repopulate the planet. How many people would be required to safely rebuild humanity's numbers without sacrificing genetic diversity? 
One geneticist studied a similar problem, which was the question, what is the optimal crew size for a generation ship? This optimal number was considered the smallest crew that could maintain acceptable genetic diversity during the ship's 10 generation voyage. For a journey of 8 to 10 generations, or about 200 years, his calculations suggested that a minimum of 160 people would be needed to maintain a stable, relatively healthy population. However, he goes on to say that this would only be possible if the crew were reintroduced to a larger population with greater genetic diversity, or had access to a fertilized egg bank at the end of the voyage. So, if we wanted to be sure that we could rebuild humanity and reintroduce all the species of flora and fauna to our post-extinction Earth, we would require a space backup of at least 160 genetically diverse humans, a large, diverse fertilized egg bank, massive stores of seeds and animal genetic material, or huge archives of the genomic data of every species on Earth. Is it possible? In theory, yes. It would be hugely expensive and require the most effort and man hours in the broadest and most overarching archival endeavor in history, but it could be done assuming everything went according to plan. Of course, we'd just have to hope that the formatting on old Earth's hard drive is compatible with our post-extinction Earth. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts on making a backup of the entire Earth. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch all my videos by clicking here. Don't forget to follow Second Thought on your favorite social media, and check out the new combined Second Thought and Real Life Lore Instagram, where we share pictures of our adventures and daily life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.